if you know about the Lord like we know. There's nothing that he can't do. And he'll do it for you. He did it for others. He can do it for you. Thank you, Lord. He's a mighty, mighty good God. But more than that, he's able to do things that we can't do. We can touch you and pray for you and, and call on that Holy Spirit to bless you and heal you. But when God gets into the picture, when the Lord that we serve comes, he just blesses not only you, but everybody. Today is a every day. Everybody blesses. Thank you. There's nothing that God can't do. He can move mountains. He's a mountain mover. He's a way maker. Our God is able to do all things. Welcome again to Union Baptist Church, where we are praying for you today. We thank God for you. Oh, God is so good. Oh, we feel so good today. Just to be able to worship in the house of the Lord one more time. There's nothing that he cannot do for you. Yes, the blood that he shed. For you and I. Oh, our dear Lord and Savior died on that cross. Oh, he gave his life for us so that we might have a right to the tree of life. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father, for being so good and so kind and still alive. There's nothing. There's nothing that you cannot do. Yes. Praise God for no more blessings, Lord. Praise him, all creatures here below. Praise him, all heavenly hosts. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Thank you, Father. Remember this. You are not alone. Because wherever you are, God is with you. If you're in the hospital, God is with you. You're in your home, God is with you. You're in your car, God is with you. Your brain, God is with you. You are never alone. Our Lord is with you each and every day because there is nothing he cannot do. Oh, thank you, Father. Thank you, Father, for moving mountains, blessing us. We're praying for quite a few people today. We've mentioned names, amen, aunts and uncles, nieces, nephews, cousins, husbands, wives. We've mentioned a few. And we're praying for you as well today. Touch yourself. Say, Lord, bless me. Lord, lift me. Lord, keep me. Thank you, Father, for there is nothing that he cannot do. We're blessing you. Putting our hand on you, wherever you are. Today. Father, Father, we stretch our hands to thee. No other help do we know. Oh, if you left us, Lord, where would we go? Thank you, Father. You are mighty. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! There's nothing that he cannot do. Don't you give up. Don't you quit. Just stay in there. Hang in there. Help us on the way. God is getting ready to bless you better than you've ever been blessed before. Come on and share with us today as we preach the word. There's need for the word. Yes, there's need for the word. We need your word, Lord. We need you, Lord. We need your blessings, Lord. We need your purification, Lord. We need your Holy Spirit, Lord. Yes, Father. Yes, Father. We thank you, Lord. Now we're going to have a word of prayer by our own Reverend Lord Peterson, amen. We're going to come and bless us. Amen. With the word of prayer this morning, amen.
Father God, is once more, we want to thank you, Lord God, for allowing us another chance to come into your house once more. And to set up some praise, Lord God. Yeah. We realize, Father God, we're not worthy of all the blessings that you have bestowed on yeah. us. Yeah. But because of your grace, because of your love, because of your guidance, and because of your forgiveness, Lord. You have allowed us to roll on a little while longer, Lord God. Yeah. Yeah. We thank you, Father God, for being the doorkeeper over our lives. Lord, we yeah. thank you for being the urchin that urges us through danger seen and unseen. Lord, we come this morning praying for all of the ones, Father God, that are bereaved this yeah. morning, Lord God. Oh, Lord God, we realize that we didn't come here to stay, but it's a tough thing to have a member of our family or a friend to pass on into yeah. eternity. Yeah. But Lord, we know that you can give us strength to do all things. Yeah. We're asking for strength this morning for the families, Lord God. Yeah. We're asking for strength for all of us, Father God. Oh, Lord God, we, we, we come this morning realizing, Father God, it's because of you that touched us this morning with a finger of love. Yeah. Allowed our lives to roll on a little while longer. And we say, thank you. Yeah. Oh, thank you, Lord God. Then we realize, Father God, as we put on our garments to come out to your house once more, we realize that we have been blessed all over again, Lord God. Yeah. To see another day that we have never seen before. Yes, sir. Lord, we ask you to fill us each and every day with your Holy Spirit. Then we'll do things in a loving and Christian manner, Lord God. Oh, That's Lord God, right. we, we thank you for being the God that you are that sits high and looks low. Yeah. We thank you for being that guide of light that we need day in and day out. Yeah. Lord, we just praise your holy and divine name because mm -hmm. you're worthy of all the praises. Lord God, we ask you to alter our steps as we go through the remainder yeah. of our lives, Lord God. Bless the little ones, Father God, that has to go to school, Father God. Scared half out yeah. of their lives, Father yeah. God, because of the tragedy yeah. that's happening, Lord God. Touch the little babies, Father God, that don't realize the danger they're in day in and day out. Yes, Lord. Oh, Lord God, we ask you to continue to bless us and keep us, Lord God. Yes, Lord. Anchored and covered in your sanctified blood. Yes. That one day, Father God, when we press that old dying pillar, yes. that we'll be able to walk in Jerusalem one day with you. Yes. That we'll be able. So right to realize and know that there's no more sorrow, yeah. there's no more pain, there's yeah. no more suffering yeah. when we come to live with you, Lord God. Yeah. Now, Lord, mold and make us what we need to be, that when yeah. that time comes, yeah. you'll accept us into the kingdom. Yes, Lord. Bless our offsprings, Father God. Yes. Bless all our siblings, Lord God. Yes, please. We know you can do it, Father God. We ask you, Father God, for the Marie family that's going through this morning, Father God. Give us the strength, Father God. Yeah. The wisdom and the knowledge, Father God, to realize and know that this is just a training facility down here. Yeah. Oh, now. But when we, when we come home to be with you, we're going to have glorious time each and every day. Yeah. Because yeah. it says when all of your children get together, yeah. what a time, what a time that should be. Yes, yes. Lord God, we're looking for that time. Yes. We ask you to cover us and keep us until that time we come home to live eternally with you. We ask these blessings. We ask your presence in this building, yes. in this service, this day, and every day, Lord God, for the remainder of our lives, Lord God, that we'll look up to you and serve you evermore. Yes. We ask it and we claim it in your son Jesus' name. Amen, amen, and amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. We thank God for you, Reverend. Thank God, thank God, thank God. What a mighty God we serve. He's able to do anything but fail. Whether you know it or not, he's never lost a battle. Did you hear what I said? Never lost a battle. 
never will leave. Thank you, Lord, for your goodness and your mercy, which follow us each and every day. I don't know about you, but I'm thankful. Thankful, thankful, thankful. Thank you. Amen. Thank you, Lord. somewhere to stand, yeah. amen. So we're going to do a song, amen. And we thank God for each and every one of you yeah. who are here. And we're going to follow by the word yeah. of the Lord. Yeah. Allergy season is upon us. Precious Lord, take my hand, lead me on, let me stand. I am tired, I am weak, I am worn. Through the storm, through the night, lead me on to the light. Precious Lord, take my hand, lead me on. Come on with me. Precious Lord, when my way grows drear, precious Lord, in the year, when my life is almost gone. Thank God. 
God for each and every one of you who are here today. And we thank God for his goodness and his mercy. If you have your Bibles, turn with me to Colossians, amen. The second chapter, eighth verse. Y'all with me? I thank God for each and every one of you. I, I, I know sometimes it gets hard. Sometimes things just seem like, when will this end? But don't you give up. The world has a tendency to lie to us. It'll tell you one thing and it's another. Amen. And I kept thinking about that. And uh, sometimes we have what they call rough spots in life. But in those rough spots, hang on. Amen. And hang in there. Uh, when those rough patches come up, uh, hang on in there because the world will lead you down the wrong path. But God will lead you in the right path. Amen, I'm gonna call this title Rough Spots. Rough Spots. Hmm. Y'all with me? Yes. Colossians, second chapter, eighth verse reads as thus in the King James Version. Beware lest it may spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit. After the tradition of men, after the rudiments of the world, and not after Christ. Yes, yes. Amen. Thank you, Lord, for the word. Thank you, Lord, for your goodness and your mercy. Lord, we invite everyone into this prayer, Lord, to be with us as we do and speak your word. Yes. For we need a word from you, Lord. For we are all sinners, and we ask you to forgive us of all of our sins. Yes. For you, we stand before you, Lord, on a righteous throne. Yes. And we ask you, Lord, to guide us and keep us and forgive us as we go through your word. And now may the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Amen. 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 Rough spots. You ever had a spot on your clothes? You couldn't get it off. Took it to the cleaners. <laughs> And they didn't do the job either. Yeah. Oh, and you knew that that beautiful jacket, that beautiful dress, that, that, that wonderful coat was ruined. Because the world will focus in on the spot. They, they won't see how beautiful the gown is. You paid so much money for this gown. But that one spot. That, that's blemished, that one patch, patchy area that's messed up. They will focus in on that. Did you know that you had a spot? <laughs> yeah, I know. But I, I paid a lot for this dress. I paid a lot for this suit. You don't say all that, but you say, oh, no. Sometimes you lie. No, oh no. <laughs> oh, man, I don't know what to do. <laughs> and then they say, oh. But they notice that spot. You notice that spot the whole time you were in the conference. The whole time you were at work. The whole time you, you keep focusing in on the spot. You ever take that spot and you take it into the, 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 the room and you, you scrub it, you didn't spill something on it, you try to get it off and you, you put it under the dryer, right? Yeah. <laughs> Trying to get it, the spot away. The world sees the spots. The world sees the patches. The world sees all of our blemishes, but the world is wrong. Oh, yeah, come on with me, come on with me. 
The priorities of the world do not align with the priorities of our faith. No. The kingdom of man is not seeking the same things as the kingdom of God. The kingdom of man worries about the spot. God knows all your blemish. Oh. He knows everything that's wrong with you. Man focuses in on the spot. Mm. And, and sometimes it's, it's agonizing to many of us, even to me, how many people think cleanliness is next to godliness. <laughs> Y'all heard him say that? Well, cleanliness is next to godliness. Find it for me in the Bible. Huh? Find it for me. Step in some mess, get in your car. The car's stinking. You all messed up. How you gonna clean it right now? So you mean to tell me that uh, I'm not clean? I took a shower when I came out. I just happened to not see where the head pick up after the dog mess. And I was everywhere on my shoe. But let me, let me break this down for you. This comes from the pages of scripture. <laughs> if this is indeed a word from God, then homemakers have every right to feel guilty that their house is not always tidy. I don't know about you, but you go to my room sometime. Clothes over here. Stuff over there. This over there. Huh? I'm telling on myself. Tell it. Hmm? Uh, uh, my shoes are, at one point in time, they were all rolled and nice and rolled up. Now a shoe over here, a shoe over there, because I'm rushing to get some way. So you mean to tell me tell the truth. that because my room is dead, cleanliness is next to godliness. Hmm. Rough spots. Well, we all got and depending on how far you carry it, people sometimes become more concerned about their furniture than they do their family. Hmm? And what about God helps those who help themselves? I'm going to help myself <laughs> to this stuff over here and put it in my pocket. He said, God helps those. Who help those heads. I'm, I'm, I'm in the, uh, the room with all the supplies. Yeah. And I say, well, I need a few pieces of this at home. I need some of this at home. I need some of that at home. And they're not going to worry. They're not going to miss it. God helps those who help themselves. Put it over your back. Smile at everybody as you're leaving out the door. Well, nobody say that. Cause you run the book room, you run the room, you you know you nobody gonna know. God knows, cause you helped yourself. Show, show me in the Bible where it says that. Spots. <laughs> then later on down the line, <laughs> somebody said, "You know, we we ordered these many supplies." <laughs> and don't get me wrong, we all guilty. We, we are guilty. I tell you what I love to do. I mean, I'm going to tell you. I'm telling myself. But I ask. When I go into my favorite bank, I'm not even going to tell you what bank it is. And I sit down every month because I have to do a particular transaction. They got a big thing of pants sitting there. And I say, I say, hey, Sister, so and so, I'm going to take a couple of pins on the way. Oh, she said, get a few. No problem. <laughs> God help those. Let help themselves. <laughs> and when I look, I got about 10 or 10, about 10 pins. I put them in my bag. I said, thank you. And she looked at me like, okay. I mean, at least she saw it. Because I helped myself. 
Huh. And, and, and the thing is, if you, if you follow this, you would be in some big trouble. Yes, sir. You went into a store, you stood. Oh, come on, somebody. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Oh, and then look at this. I've seen this used as a basis for many people thinking they can work their way to heaven, even. Come on, God's stuff. Hmm. Yeah. They, they, they therefore miss. The biblical teaching that eternal life is free. Come on, Pastor. It's free. It's free indeed. Yeah. There is no charge. Mm -hmm. Could you imagine if God said, Well, I'm going to help myself. I'm going to take your life, take your life, take yours, and guess what? I'm helping myself because I'm going to put somebody else in your place. Mm -hmm. For everything we did wrong. Yeah. Oh, y'all got quiet. Think about all we do wrong. Yes. Every day we do something wrong. Yes. Every day we sin. Every day we fall short. Every day something goes wrong in our life. Every day. But God still says, I love you. Let's get it right today. Yes. I say, thank you, Lord. Yes. Thank you. Every is free. Romans 6 and 20. Free. Look it for yourself. It's free. Therefore, we shouldn't be surprised when we experience conflict and tension. Huh? Instead, we should see the conflict and tension as confirmation that we are doing the right thing. Ooh. Come on, somebody. Listen to this. Listen. Have you ever <laughs> been on a hike, been on a walk, and gone through a rough spot? Oh man, this is the ground is all messed up. You ever, you ever, and, and, and the ground is just messing. Oh man, life. Ooh, ooh. Man, that, uh, why do I want to come up in this hill? Why do I want to walk up here? Or, or, or every time you put your foot down, you you, you think you're gonna trip. How about that you're not sure you're going to fall or hurt your ankle, but you keep on trying to, to get through this hill, this movement. As you, as you get older and you start walking with canes, come on somebody. You, you wonder if you're gonna keep your balance. You, you, you know, you see people all the time, you gotta grab my arm. You, 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 you wondering if your feet are steady yeah. because they're rough spots. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. How about uh, uh, one that I dislike is trying to walk through ice-covered snow? And, yeah. huh? and, and, and have you ever given any uh, 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 thought about you, you step wrong or, uh, or your movement, and here we go airborne. Now, that was a little yeah. poof. You ever fell in the snow? Yes, yes, absolutely. And, and, and it hurts. Absolutely. Because it's not no little fall in the snow. It's a yeah. choo -choo, you slide, what? And it hurts. Sometimes you don't even want to go out in the snow. Oh, it's snowing. I'm not going out today. Amen. Amen. Especially if you live in a snow-filled area. It's definitely not a nice situation. Amen. Rough spots. Yeah. These types of adventures are very much like walking through life. Oh, come on, somebody. Come on, Trying to depend on worldly wisdom. Yes. See, when we try to depend on the world and its wisdom, it'll fool you. Yes. Hmm? you you're never quite sure you're going to land on solid ground as principles, people, and values are constantly changing and shifting. One day they tell you, you should take this. The next day they tell you, no, don't take this, take that. Then they tell you, well, this is good for you. You should have this, <laughs> but this is what you need. And then they find out later, well, that's not really what you needed. You needed Come on this. Now. Come on now. So then all of a sudden, you've been taking this, and then all of a sudden you see the lawsuits and everything happen because they told you to take this, but then you find out you're taking this, it's killing you more. The world is constantly changing. It tells you, well, 
I think that you should do this. And then all of a sudden, well, guess what? Maybe you shouldn't do this. <laughs> Maybe you should slow down. I remember they told you you couldn't drink coffee. Amen. Huh? Now they said, oh, coffee's good for you. I said, what? Y'all made me stop drinking coffee. I like coffee. Nice. Oh, my goodness. I used to, when I, I, I've been to places, I, I'll give me that coffee. You know, you in a different country. Give me that coffee and bring it back with me. Bring everybody else some back. Then they say, it's not good for you. Now they say, oh, you know what? Coffee is good for you. You know what? I'm done. Yeah. Hmm? Eggs. Oh, eggs not good for you. Then you find out they got so much protein in it, and so much this in it, and so much that for you. You, 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 you start thinking, what in the world? Yeah. What in the world is right? Amen. Hmm? Yeah. This is what the problem is. You're never quite sure you're going to land on solid ground when you deal with the world. It's never a safe bet. Man will lie to you. Oh, you want me to repeat it again to you? Man will lie to you. Women been knowing this for the longest. Ask their husband, where you been? Oh, I just was at that son. You lying. And then they go about predicting and showing you where you lie at. Ooh. And you get the psalm, you should have just told the truth from the jump. But this is what the world does to us. It pulls us in and says, oh, you can do this. Oh, you can. And, and they give us all these goodies and all this stuff. But the world is lying to us. Oh, y'all, come on, somebody. Listen, listen, listen. Look at Colossians. Let's go back to the story. Colossians 2 and 8. I want us to read these words of Paul together. See to it that no one takes you captive through hollow and deceptive philosophy, which depends on human tradition and the elemental spiritual forces of this world rather than on Christ. Paul warns us about the world's logic and values. He calls us as believers to stand firm on a different set of values. Those of Christ. Huh? But even when we choose to stand firm on the things of God, we still will be faced with the values of this world. How do we know when something we hear is worldly? How do we know? How do we know when something we hear is godly? How do we know when we are being led astray, or worse, being held captive by worldly principles and teachings? How do we know? Well, we know. I just don't want to draw your attention back to that thing that I just said, that illustration I gave. I brought up a few points about going through rough spots. Yes. Regarding worldly principles and teaching, like I said, we are never quite sure you're going to land on solid ground yes. as the world starts. On, principles and values and, and our, our dish are constantly changing. When you get on a rough spot, the world will tell you, oh, it's going to be all right. You can step there, and before you know it, you're going to slip and, and fell on your behind. Rough spots. I remember one time, might have told the story, I love the roller blade. I still love the roller blade. I just, now it's getting back to springtime. I got to get me some new ones. And yes, the pastor got a little, you know, I scuba dive, I roll the blade. I, I, I still got crazy in me. And, and, and one time, I decided to go down a hill. This hill was a, a steep hill. It was, and, and all the other 
guys were going down it, but they were a lot younger than me, too. Amen. They had been doing it. And I said, okay, we start down the hill. Oh, I'm going. I'm like, yeah. Then all of a sudden, I'm like, yeah. Oh. Oh. Things are, the cars are flying back. Did I realize that the driveway goes up to? <laughs> driveway, I turn up. <laughs> airborne goes the pastor. And I, and I see myself in the air. You, that's how high you are. <laughs> when you see yourself in the air, yeah. and you, ooh, yeah, right. what is the name? It's the word. It didn't hurt. It hurt. I laid there for about 10 minutes. It took a, the other folks who went down to come up about another 10 to get there. I just, it felt like I was laying there forever. Everything in my body hurt. The world will tell you, go down the hill. You can do it. Go ahead and do it. Everything you can do. You can do everything. You can do it all. Don't worry. The world will tell you this. Y'all hear what I'm saying? And don't get me wrong, it's good to have lofty ideas, but I know that I'm not gonna be a rocket scientist. I know that I'm not gonna be a linebacker with the New York Giants or Pittsburgh Steelers. There's some things I just know I'm not gonna be able to do. The world though will tell you, you can do anything. And then you try it. And sometimes the failure can lead to a serious problem. I have learned I like to rollerblade, but I don't do heels. Nice level surfaces. Because as you get older, everything don't heal like it used to. Hmm? Everything is, you just not going to be able to do what you thought you could do. But the world, huh? The world tells you, do it. And this is another thing. This is a point. I'm not going to be here long with you. But, but this is a serious point. Worldly values are inconsistent. Come on now. Inconsistent. Let me help you. We are all familiar with one of the primary uh, uh, models of the kingdom of man. Follow your heart. Go ahead, follow your heart. You can do it. Now, I don't know about you. <laughs> do whatever makes you happy. Follow your heart. Do whatever makes you happy. This is the world talking. Oh my goodness. These principles sound good enough. But the problem is they're inconsistent. Like some of us. Shaky and contradict the teachings of scripture. Follow your heart. You know your heart can get you in trouble. Hmm? Look at the word it says in Jeremiah 17 and 9. It says the heart is deceitful above all things and beyond cure. Who can understand it? Oh my goodness. The world says follow your heart. But the Bible warns us the heart is wicked, deceitful, and confusing. And who can understand it? You follow your heart. You love this man. You love this woman. But they don't love you. You follow in your heart. You are, well, follow my heart. I'm a, I'm a, and you follow. You give them money. You do all this. And then before you know it, they're like, <laughs> I never told you I loved you. Oh, girl, you better get up out of here. I ain't, I ain't say I loved you. Following our heart sometimes can lead us down the road of rejection and depression and hurt 
and, and, and loss of who our self-esteem, it can hurt. Yes. But we follow our heart. Yes. But when we follow the scripture, yes. when we follow God, oh, y'all come on with me. Huh? Jesus says this in Matthew 10 and 39, whoever huh, finds their life will lose it. Yes. And whoever does loses their life for my sake will find it. The world says that you need to make sure you're happy no matter what. But Jesus says we should lose our lives for his sake. Meaning uh, we trade all of the stuff that makes us happy uh, in our kingdom for his kingdom. You're not going to find nothing that's going to make you completely happy. You ever, you ever seen somebody who always talk about that? I'm not happy. Well, guess what? It's not my job to make you happy. Oh, oh y'all. Y'all didn't hear that, did you? Come on. It, 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 it's not my job to make you happy. I can help you along. I can love you. I can give you gifts. I can take you here. We can go here. We can do for one another. But guess what? If you want to be happy, you got to have happiness inside of you. Because if you're not happy, you can't make me happy. So we can't be happy together. Come on, What in the world? I'm not happy. Come I've seen people say this. They got a brand new car every year. They got a roof over their head, a beautiful house. Clothes when they walk in, the closet is full. Huh? Food, they open up the refrigerator, everything in there. They can put on any kind of shoe. They can get out. They can do all kind of things. And then they have a nerve to tell you, I'm not happy. Yeah, Excuse me? This is the world talking. Man. Something's wrong. You need to sit in front of the pastor and tell him what's going on. You need to sit in front of somebody who can help you, counsel you, to find out where you are, have a crack in your soul. So you can find out what it is that you can repair it, so you can be happy. Because if you're not happy, you're going to make yourself miserable and somebody else too. Oh. It's amazing. The heart is inconsistent. Always changing, falling in and out of love with any number of things. Uh, oh, y'all, y'all know what y'all love. You know what you before you know you love this. I know. I remember. I used to love chocolate, but then I got introduced to deep dark chocolate. Oh, y'all know what I'm talking about. Chocolate was okay. Milk chocolate was okay, but when I got a taste of that dark chocolate. I said, <laughs> you got my word. That milk chocolate, y'all keep it. But that dog chocolate, <laughs> it just wrapped itself around my tongue. It just made it melt in my mouth. And it said, oh, wow. And I was like, I don't know. So I, 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 when I go to a store, I just got to have some dark chocolate. <laughs> no matter what's going on in my life, if I'm in a store and they got good, I'm not going to mention no name, but if they got the top shelf, yeah. then I had a nerve to go to Amsterdam. Come on. I went into chocolate heaven. And see, I, I did that. It was again, I love dark chocolate. But when I went to their dark chocolate, this dark chocolate don't work no more. That dark chocolate was something to, to just tell the Lord, Lord, how you make this like this? What in the world? Now I just got to have that dark chocolate. This dark chocolate don't work no more. Because the world told me, oh, it's milk chocolate. Then it's this dark chocolate. But then you find something else over here. It's almost the same thing about relationships. You're going to always find somebody you think is better, but they're not really better for you. It's still chocolate. You better love the chocolate you got sometime. Because guess what? I can't get over to Amsterdam all the time. 
Matter of fact, I've only been once in my life. <laughs> that, and plane tickets are expensive. But the thing is, you got to learn how to love it all. Oh, we get caught up, don't we? Mm -hmm. Moving from target to target, one day to the next, huh? Sometimes an hour at a time, just be honest for a moment. How can you build anything stable off of these principles of, uh, I'm not happy, oh, I need this, I love that, then you end up loving something else. You just got an unmade up mind, a fickle mind. Huh? Your mind needs to be regulated on the scriptures of God. Listen, listen to this as I, I get ready to leave you. Matthew 7 and 24, listen to this, listen to this. Jesus teaching his sermon on the mount. This is what he has to say about building our lives. Oh, y'all, come on with me. Come on with me. Listen what he says. Therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine and acts on them, make them prepared to a wise man who built his house on the rock. And the rain fell and the floods came and the winds blew and slammed against that house. And yet it did not fall. For it had been founded on the rock. Everyone who hears these words of mine and does not act on them will be like a foolish man who built his house on the sand. The rain fell and the floods came and the winds blew and slammed against the house and it fell and great was its fall. This is the world telling us you need to build your life, your happiness around that rock. That rock called Jesus, oh, 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 huh? On Christ, the solid rock, I stand. All of the ground is sinking sand. You think you love this? You don't love this. You think you want this? You really don't want this. You think you're doing anything? You're not doing nothing. Come on, somebody. Did you catch that? Jesus himself is commanding us to listen and obey. Oh, 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 oh y'all don't hear me. Yeah. I, I got I got about ten pages, but I'm gonna keep keep on uh, moving to the end because there's something you gotta understand. The world tries to seduce us. Yeah. That's another point. It tries to manipulate us. Yeah. Uh, you need a bigger chest. You need a bigger behind. Huh? You need stronger legs. You need a prettier face. You need to lose some weight. I don't know about you, but when I go to work, I look at average people and everybody got something wrong with them. I'm not fooled or manipulated by these audiovisual things. Huh? TikTok and Instagram, you know, all that stuff. And you look, filters all over the place. They lie. Huh? People, we wear glasses. We got, we got a, a mouth that's crooked. I got teeth right now, all messed up. We walk a different kind of way. We got back problems, feet problems, hair problems. In fact, I ain't got no hair. <laughs> we got all types of problems. We are not perfect people. But the world will seduce you into saying, you got to be perfect. Yeah. You got to look this way. And you get some people so caught up in it that they will do everything to manipulate themselves to look like something until they end up looking like something worse than that they were. Yeah. 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 Oh, listen to this. Listen to this. If you read this, 2 Timothy 4, 3 and 4, for the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but wanting to have their ears tickled, yes. they will accumulate for themselves teachers in accordance to their own desires and will turn away their ears from the truth and will turn aside to myths. Oh, Paul knew huh, people. And what they do, they spend their entire lives trying to get somewhere where they don't even need to be. Come on, Pastor. Oh, Lord Jesus. Pastor. Huh? The Bible is full of practical principles.
principles that we need for life. Yeah. Huh? Listen to this. We lie, we cheat, we steal, pastors included, mm -hmm. deacons included, deaconesses included, trustees included, world is included. Every one of us lie, we cheat, we steal, we tell half truths, we, we half bake stuff, we put stuff in our pockets we shouldn't be putting in our pockets. We, we do things we shouldn't do. And then we end up like the two thieves on the cross. Listen to this. The thieves on the cross followed the world doing what they wanted. Didn't they? And then all of a sudden, huh? One says, huh, he extended a condition to the Lord. If you are the Christ, save yourself and us. Save, save yourself and us. See, see, that's how the world will tell you. Save yourself and us. Why are you doing it? Now, man, when you save yourself, make sure you put a little bit more money in my pot so I'm all right. You know you love me. You know you care about me. You know you can do it. Come on. Come on now. But the other thing, after hearing all the madness, they yeah. said, listen, we got what we deserve. Yeah. You know what we've done? You know what we have done? Yeah. All of us are guilty. Yeah. Yeah. Huh? Guilty, he asks, he says, if you are the Christ, save yourself and us. <laughs> Luke 23 and 39. But the other place is based on Christ. He says, Lord, remember me. Yeah. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. The rough spots yeah. in life. Lord, remember me <laughs> when things aren't going right. Lord, remember me. Oh, he says, surely this day I will remember you and I will bring you into paradise. Huh? Rough spots. We got rough spots in life. Lord, remember me. Oh, you know what I'm talking about? It takes devotion and effort to learn to walk in the steps with the Spirit as you follow the teachings of the Scripture. Yeah. It takes faith to walk after a man who died on a cross, uh, huh, who got there, and then he said, uh, Come unto me, all ye labor and who are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. You see, rough spots come. Sometimes we got rough spots we can't get rid of. Sometimes we step on rough spots to make us fall. Sometimes we have rough spots that make us sick. But sometimes yeah. you got to learn that sometimes you're just not going to be able to do it and get it right. But all the time, I say all the time, you need to call on Jesus. Um, this is what you need to say. I know what Isaiah said. He called him Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, and the Prince of Peace. Mary called him Jesus, for he shall save the world from all the sins. Call him Lord. Jesus, oh Lord, help me when I'm down. Help me when I'm falling short. Help me when everything seems to go wrong. Help me oh, through my rough spots. Remember me. The great God who held me up when I couldn't hold myself. He's my friend. He's my deliverer. He's my counselor. He's my comforter. In the day of battle, he is my shield and my buckler. He is my fortress, my high tower. He is the rock in the weary land from the waters that flow. He is the refreshing and he is the restorer. He is great. He heals. He is a shepherd who guides and provides. He is Alpha and Omega. Oh, when you got those rough spots, he's there with you in the beginning. And sometimes you can get those spots to disappear. And when you get them all to disappear, that's when God says, you see, I did it. I did it. It wasn't you. You struck all you could. But when you got the spot called Jesus, the cleaner called Jesus, who came down 42 generations, who died on the cross, laid there all night Friday. Yes, he is. He is the 
lion of Judah, the light of the world, he can help you through your rough spots. Yes. Don't you yes. give up on the Lord, because he won't give up on you. Thank you, Father. Yes. Thank you for being there when I wasn't there for myself. Thank you for being a rock in the weary land. Thank you for helping me through all my problems. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Yes. He's a whole time God. Yes, yes he is. Uh -huh. To help you through your rough spots. Yes. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, merciful God, we thank you, Lord, for your goodness and your mercy. We ask you, Lord, right now to help us through all our rough spots. We thank you, Father, for your goodness and your mercy each and every day. Because where would we be without you? So, Lord, when we're having rough spots and we can't seem to get it right, help us clean them up. And we ask that you clean them up through your darling son, Jesus who died on that cross for us and rose with all power. Thank you, Father. Thank you. Thank you for your goodness and your mercy. And they all said,